Good evening, everybody. Lovely to see you all here. Thank you for coming. Um, this is the March, March meeting, but it's an extraordinary meeting. And the reason it's extraordinary is so that we have Duncan, Master here, who are going to fill us in with aspirations for new housing in, in Wedding. Um, we thought we understood most of this, but so this is a fact-finding exercise for all of us. Um, I'll not be hissing. You know, if, if you've got questions that you know, we haven't asked, I think provided we, it doesn't become a dialogue, then yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll, you guys are welcome to join in, okay? But please do it through me, if that's the right expression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, and by the way, the meeting is being recorded. Okay. Um, I'll shut up. Duncan, do you want to Good evening, Chairman and members. Um, as you say, um, obviously my name is Duncan Harvey. I, I'm, I head up Sotomore's Housing Development Team. Um, my colleague to the left is Esther Carter, who, um, I say to you, she's the only one I've got left now. Um, we are recruiting two new members of staff. But Esther is, is working on something that relates to Wedmore as we speak, so and I'll touch on that in a moment. Um, I've come along tonight, really, I, uh, you know, having spoken to, to, to your clerk, really, for a couple of things. One, I want to give you an update in terms of um, Cross Farm, what, we're, what, what the, the prospective developers talking to us about in terms of affordable housing, and I want to just touch on, on what we're doing in terms of a housing need survey for the village. I want to talk about what Holdenhurst, or the, the, the applicant that Holdenhurst is currently proposing to do in terms of their affordable housing provision. I don't particularly want to talk about the planning application because I think you discussed that last night um, and obviously it's an active planning application um, and I don't really want to get into the referrals of the merits of it. Is it right, wrong or different? I will touch on certain things because it is relevant, but I particularly want to talk about the implications of the applicant at Holden Nurse offering off-site contribution. And I just want members to be crystal clear what that means um, in terms of what we can and can't do with it. And I, and I really want to wrap the, wrap the discussion up with just a timely reminder of, of something I, I would hope the Parish Council would want to do is, is to get the message out about people, how they go about applying for housing if, the, if they're looking for it. Because sometimes people don't always follow that through. And if you're not, if you're not in it to win it, then you, you're going to miss the boat, literally. So um, I have produced a briefing note, um, which um, uh, we, we, we would normally put on our website. Um, there's nothing in there that's contentious. Um, it's there for all of the public to see. It, it's two values. One, it's a public record to refer what we've talked about. Uh, but it also, it also, we find it helpful with the parish, the parish councils. It's quite often parish councils get accused of we don't know what's going on. And actually, we've had it in lots of villages. And actually, we can point people to that website and say, well, that was what was discussed. And if you want to read it, and then pick it up from there. So I'm not going to go through this report line by line. Um, but obviously, um, I just wanted to, I mean, I think you're all familiar with the, the changing world of the local plan. At the moment, Wedmore is classed as a key world settlement, which effectively means you're getting infill development or uh, by exception, uh, an example being Cross Farm. Um, obviously, the, the emerging local plan places you in what they call <coughs> Tier 2, well, that's the proposal. Um, there's a slightly different ramification for the parish council or for the parish in the sense that Rather than dealing with with that, with dealing with sites through an exception site, it's going to be down more down to an allocation policy. Whether that comes out of your emerging neighbourhood plan and a combination of the local authority um, it remains to be seen. But obviously, the neighbourhood plan will inform that debate quite 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 a lot. Um, you, you may or may not be aware that the, the local plan is currently being scrutinised by an inspector, and the inspector has recommended that we reinstate uh, a P4 policy as well for Tier 2 settlements. So not only is there a possibility of an allocation process, but if there is still unmet need, having done the allocation process, the inspector is saying, it does. it's, it's suggesting that there could be a, a P4 type policy available to parishes in the Tier 2. Um, whether that gets adopted remains to be seen. Can you what P4 policy is, please? P4 policy is a... Is a, is a planning policy which basically allows you to build housing outside of your settlement boundary um, specifically to tackle a shortage of housing. Now that's typically affordable housing, 
but it doesn't necessarily have to be affordable housing. <coughs> and it allows us to build, or it allows a developer to build market housing to fund the development <coughs> affordable, which is exactly what's happening or proposed across farm. So it's a P4 type policy, um, it will be subtly different. Now if it gets adopted, fine, but what will happen is the, the revised local plan after it's gone through the inquiry, the inspection process, sorry, will be coming out for a further consultation. So you as a parish council of the community will have another opportunity to, to, to have a view and give a comment on it. Um, I'm not going to say any more of that on that at the moment. In terms of um, Cross Farm, I will touch on that to now. Obviously, um, the Reserve Matters application for Cross Farm uh, went live today. Um, so just for reference, a Reserve Matters application <coughs> is what a developer would have to put in to, 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 to take forward the outline that's currently in place at Cross Farm. I haven't read the Reserve Matters application because it only landed on our, on our desk today. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I mean, all we can say is we have had discussions with the prospective developer. Um, we've been impressed with what they've told us and what they've shown us of what they've done elsewhere. What well, I am absolutely 100% certain of is they will deliver a very high quality development. They have talked to us about the housing, the affordable housing on the site. So on page two of the briefing paper, I've summarised what is currently in the outline plan application. Um, we're talking about 24 affordable homes so at just over 40% affordable housing, which the parish council fought hard for. Mm -hmm. um, you will note from the schedule there on the table there that it's heavily weighted in favour of rented accommodation because that's what your previous housing needs survey in 2014 told us was required. Um, now, what came out of the consultation process um, was there were an awful lot of people came forward to say I hadn't bothered applying to, to fill out the housing needs survey, I hadn't realised it affected me and I'm interested in buying something, not renting something. Um, the developer, whilst they have their reserve matters application has been um, worked up in, to, to actually comply with the outline planning application, has posed the question to us to say is there any appetite to revisit the affordable housing tenure, i.e. what they're asking us is, do we want to provide more home ownership options at the expense of rented accommodation? Now I said two things, one, I need to talk to the Paris Council, clearly, and engage local views, um, but what we're also doing is we are in the process of just updating your housing needs survey, because the previous one now is out of date, um, which I think will be useful in terms of helping you think about or responding to that inquiry, uh, but I think it would also be very useful in terms of your thinking around your about the neighbourhood plan, because I think it would inform that process as well. Can so, I just dive in now? Absolutely. You, you say the the survey. This yeah. is the survey done for the developer. No, no. This is the the survey done for the developer across farm that has identified a change. In ten years. No, right? no, 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 no. I'll just take it back a bit. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what we're saying is, there. It's been put to us that th there is an appetite from the village for for <laughs> more, more, more. Well, through their, well, <coughs> well, they they feel that they've been talking to people through the consultation process. So it is that developed. That yeah. is the consultation we're talking about. This is not the housing needs consultation. Correct. This is. The developers Correct. So the developers come back to us to say, is there an appetite to change the tenure that's currently specified in the section one and six agreement? Mm -hmm. And that's why I said I need to start gauge mm -hmm. local reaction. And you know, it, in terms of informing my thinking and your thinking, I think a new housing needs survey will, will help do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no cost implication to the council, to you as the parish council. <coughs> We're paying for that out of our resources. Um, and obviously it will then update what we what we knew in 2014. Now it may be that it might show something very similar, it may show something very different, but it, it does give you an insight into what the local need is now as opposed to nearly four years ago. Yeah. What's the old survey four years ago. What sort of time are you talking about? Well the survey I, I sent Rod a copy of the, the letter 
um, earlier in the week, which I believe you yeah. circulated, Ron, yeah. to yeah. members. Yeah. Um, Esther's been working on it this week. Today. Today, in fact. We're hoping to get the, 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 the survey out as soon as it's practical. Uh, is it next week? Early next week. Early next week. Okay. We're going to give people two, or th two, maybe three weeks to respond. We can then work on get updating the, the, the conclusions from that from that um, survey. And, and, the, and what we really want to be able to do is to come back to you, really, before the application, the reserve matters application is determined by mm -hmm. our planning department to say either the parish council view is we'll stick with what we've got, um, or we might want to talk to you about something different in terms of tenure. But that's going to be quite a tight schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an, it, I mean, you don't need to agree the detailed through the reserve matters application, because they, what they've actually done is they've, they've, they've put it in as if they're trying to deliver the outline. You can still have that dialogue ongoing right up to the point before they put a spade in the ground. So it's not, a, but we'd like to get it out done fairly quickly so that you've got something <coughs> yeah. to think about. Yeah. So that, that's what we're doing in terms of cross farm. So we've been asked to think about a change in tenure. We haven't dismissed it, but we've said we've got to do some work and we need to have some dialogue with the wider community, which is what we're here to do tonight. Thank you. So when people ask you, why are we doing a housing needs survey? <coughs> The reason we're doing it is partly to inform that thinking, but it will also help the neighbourhood plan to identify, mm -hmm. so it may identify something that previously hasn't been thought of. Mm -hmm. Do, does anybody got any questions on that bit of the work at the moment? It would be a good time to start. Any, anybody got questions so far? Is it all making sense to the to yeah. our spectators? Mm -hmm. wrong, then. Carry on. Oh, that's a start. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> as soon as the survey goes out, what Esther will do is drop roll a line to say it's gone out. So, if you do get approached by members of the public, at least you know what it's all about. Um, we will try and get something in the local press to say it's going ahead so that people can show the Valley Gazette or something to see if we make sure people are aware of that. It's on our website. Absolutely. If you don't mind, that would be very yeah. useful. Very useful. Now, in turning to Holdenhurst, I don't want, I said, I don't want to talk about our plan application. Are you going to leave Cross Farm completely? Um, I, that's why I said if you want, do you want if there's anything else you want to ask. Not about the housing needs survey, yeah, okay. but certainly have a question about the affordable housing okay, far, and the pepper potting. Yeah, far away. And I don't think it's pepper potted, I think it's clustered. I haven't seen, I haven't looked at it, as I said earlier. Um, I mean, what, what we're not going to accept is effectively 24 affordable housing units as the nearest damn it on top of each other. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like, it's, it's pepper potting and there's, there's yeah. putting more than one go. Pepper, we've got pepper to, potting is, is, is distributed equally around the site. They're not. To some extent, what will govern that, that pepper potting will be the nature and tenure of the properties. Mm. What you wouldn't want, if, 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 we, if you stuck with what you've currently got, which is 20 vintage units, four low-cost market share ownership, a housing association is going to have to pick up those properties up and manage them. Yeah. <clears throat> Best one in the world, what, you, what is not going to work is, and I'll use an extreme example, there's an affordable, there's a market, there's an affordable, there's a market. It is, it's it's not practical to manage it. It, it, yeah. it. it just isn't practical. What we mean by pepper potting is, so if you've got 24 affordables, you might see small clusters of eight or six or 10, something like that, in one area, but you wouldn't expect to see the eight next to the 10 next to another six. So it, it effectively looks like a big blob of affordables. Yeah. So what we'd be looking for is possibly spread across the site, <laughs> probably the best way I can describe it. But if, sorry, but if at the end of the day, this 10 year split mix changes, mm. so there's more home ownership, then we might have more scope to, as you described it, have it more individually dispersed, because home ownership products are different yeah. to rented products. Right, Duncan, Jess, you had a question? Uh, I think Duncan's more or less, I am very worried about step by in them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know down on the one that we got at Worthington Close, I know somebody that wanted to sell that, and you've got to go back to the Housing Association, and they have to say whether you can sell it or no. Correct. And this chap had an awful job to sell his, 
And I, that's one thing I would warn anybody. If you're going to share a donorship, look at all the things first before you sign up to it, because it can be a very um, arduous thing to get out of. Just to clarify what Jess is saying, um, there, was, there was a property down in Worthington Close several years ago yeah. where the gentleman concerned bought a small percentage of the property originally and then came into some money or whatever it was yeah. and he bought another significant yeah, right. chunk of the property. Yeah. I think he ended up owning 80% share of the property. He then had to move away from the village for employment yeah. and he did the right thing. He tried to market it locally um, and there were lots of people interested in it but they couldn't afford an 80% share in a Wedmore property. <coughs> so at some point the guy was, was, was yeah. saying you know, what do I do? Uh, you know, I can't drop the price. Um, do I expand my area of search? And that's what caused the frustration that's right. because there was a risk that, uh, and I'm going to use the term non local, yeah. uh, would buy that property. <coughs> yeah, uh, that's what it was all so about. So it, it is a risk, you're quite right. I've got a question from Trevor. Yeah, uh, sorry, no, thank you, um, Chair. Um, on the point of, of clustering or pepper potting, um, on the Coombe Gate entrance, uh, Duncan, uh, 14 of the 18 developments are affordable. Um, as I say, I haven't looked at it because it only landed on my desk today. Um, I, my personal view is, uh, uh, on my initial reaction, is that doesn't feel like it's been properly yeah, thought it about. Been, that, but that's my been. initial reaction, having not seen it. So and then on the other entrance, which is, I guess you'd call the Borough Mallow yeah. entrance, there's all eight. Yeah. And, and all of the bungalows, the one, I think they're all one bed. Yeah bungalows, they're all furthest away from the amenities. Yeah. And those properties, you would think, would be for the elderly and would need to be closer to the amenities. Um, I've taken the point on board and I, and I need to look at it before I can... And I'm happy to come back to, to Rod and the chairman to, to give our thoughts before we formally comment if you give it helps. Yeah, and so I haven't looked at it and it would be remiss of me to, to say any more at the moment. It's a strongly felt. And I, and I think I've, I've read it down, and, I'll, and I'll, Esther and I, when we look at it, when we read the application, it's something that we will keep special consideration to. Right, okay. Last time. Yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> just a first, Last uh, time just, this time. I just wanted to find out what, what's driving the... Uh, I can see the use of having a housing needs survey, and I can see that some people may have rocked up at, you call it a consultation, yeah. but it was in fact information. Um, uh, what, how many people drove the idea of having uh, to change the tenure? Um, How many? Can I, can I just clarify, when, I meant, when we talked about consultation, I'm also referring back to the earlier consultation, which was held down in the pub, where it was held down in the back room, where there were particularly lots of younger singles and couples coming through the door when we were originally considering the outline application in the first case. So it isn't just the, the, no. what we see, uh, what uh, ACORN have done. Um, so, all we're saying at the moment, I have no desire to change the tenure mix whatsoever. All I'm saying is it's been put to us that there may be an appetite from local people um, to buy a home ownership product at an affordable price. All we're going to be doing with the survey is saying, is that right? this, this is what we found out in 2018, do you want to consider changing it? Yes or no? It's as simple as that. And we're hoping to get that sort of answer within... Well, I would imagine six weeks, probably five to six weeks, a draft. We get drafts in certainly in six weeks. Claire, you happy with that answer? Uh, I am, but just to come back, if I may... Uh, um, hang on, this is the second comeback. No, no, the first one was the second question. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on, the, on the people that then showed an interest for... single people that showed an interest <coughs> to rent uh, or, or property, or to, sorry, share ownership property, how many of those at the meeting that was at the Swan have registered onto your website asking for housing? I don't know to answer that question. Because um, I bet they haven't. Um, I mean, I'll come on to what people need to do to register. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, um, I just think it's important that members, if, if you're given the opportunity to think about providing something else, and it's something that you feel is appropriate, then you have a window of opportunity to have that say now. As I say, I, to reiterate, Esther and I have no ambition to change that tenure mix 
That's currently in the section 106. Yeah, and it's, it's that bit which is sort of slightly concerning. So, you know, we, we are under the impression that 106 <coughs> is legally binding on, on it is all legally of the yes. signatures. It is legally binding. Yes. You, can, you can vary. Right, well, that was what I'm getting to. How can, can we do that? We can, we, well, we do it by deed of variation, effectively. Okay. So, we enter into an agreement with the developer to say, we, we want to vary something in that section 106, which it could be the 10 year split. Mm -hmm. and, so, we, and, and that's not uncommon. <coughs> But we're not. We are not going to do it unilaterally. No. That's my point. This could ultimately change the design of the development. No. Uh, well, it won't. Well, no. it shouldn't do. No. It's yeah. the tenure we're talking about, mm -hmm. rather than the yeah. property design. <coughs> okay. Carry on, man. Are we done with Cross Farm? Yeah. Any more questions on Cross Farm? I hope not. Going, going, <laughs> gone, <laughs> gone. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Holdenhurst. As I said, not talking about plan application. Um, I haven't formally commented on it. Um, and, but well, obviously you had a debate last night and I understand it was deferred, yep. um, which um, um, was fed back to me by various sources. Um, I understand that um, uh, the planning team at Sedgemore's view is that they are looking to determine it under the, the emerging local plan tier two housing policy, mm -hmm. uh, not a P4 policy. Don't shoot the messenger, but that's what I was told this morning. Um, obviously, I'm here to talk about... What does that mean? Well, it means that um, the tier, as I said earlier, the tier two policy is effectively an allocation policy, and it doesn't necessarily um, relate to having to... Well, a good example is if only has an survey. If, if, it's, if it's determined under, T, under the tier two new policy, or emerging policy, Whereas a P4 needs to have a But the P4, the point of the P4 was that it was outside of the boundary, which Correct. it is. But I thought it was that P4 which insisted upon the affordable housing component. Well, there is a, the, the council has a generic affordable housing policy, which is nothing, which, which applies to any site over, well in Wedmore's world, yeah. anything 11 or more. Um, so we are allowed to, to ex extract affordable housing yeah. at, a, at a lesser rate, so it will be 30% not 40%, as is the case with P4, but we're still entitled to extract affordable housing as a legitimate mm -hmm. planning game on a scheme of that scale. So, but the issue is, as I say, if the planners do determine it under the emerging local plan, mm -hmm. the, the Holden House people don't need to have a housing survey. Whereas the P4 scheme would require that. Now I've said don't shoot the messenger. But if we have a housing needs survey across farm, we've got a housing needs survey. You have, <coughs> but if it, if the local planning authority are determining it under one policy, then that's then that's certain requirements. All I'm saying is P4 needs a housing needs survey to justify it outside development limits. If they determine it under the emerging local plan policy, which effectively allocates sites, <coughs> or the neighbouring plan would do the same, then they don't need it. And I, that's the debate, I think, that's going on up there. Okay. What I want to talk to you about, really, then, <laughs> is you're, prob you've, you're probably aware the developer's position is affordable housing and market housing, or their type of market housing, are not compatible bed fellows on the same site. It's a, I think it's a well, a well sung song that has happened on numerous occasions on previous applications. Um, their proposed, I mean, in some respects, it caused a right headache last time. Um, the council's position, and it's on page three of my report, mm -hmm. is an offsite contribution is acceptable in principle. And I believe they read out my my short email to Yes, I originally helped you email. Um, I had to caveat it yeah, they without, without prejudice. prejudice because it was just an initial reaction to a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, so just to, to clarify, the developer is currently offering their to discharge their affordable housing liability by way of a off-site commuted sum, which in layman's language is money. Money, yeah. Um, they have to, do it, have to, the value of that um, contribution has to equate to what would have been 30% on site, 
And I'm not going to go into the where for all about how you go about doing it because it's it's quite complicated and it's going to be quite contentious because I think we're going to have a bit of a standoff. But needless to say, a 30% the value of a 30% contribution from a scheme to get more is, in my opinion, is going to be significant. Yes. Yeah. I can't say how significant, but it's certainly going to be chunky. Yeah. If it was Bridgewater, it'd be completely different. Um, so. Um, our starting for 10 has always been why can't you provide on the site? They're putting forward a case to say we don't think it's compatible. That's for the planning authority to determine. Um, we can accept off-site contributions, and we have done on occasions. We prefer not to, but we have done it. Um, as I say, the value of the contribution is negotiable, although we have a we have a formula. I thought there was a formula oh, for yeah, off-site. We've, we've got a formula, but it's still negotiable between us and the developer. They will say no, whatever I go back with, I mm -hmm. but I've got a justification for why I think that value is reasonable. Mm -hmm. As and when that becomes, I have that debate, I have no qualms in sharing it with the Post Council, but at the moment I've not had that debate. Um, so it would be remiss of me to sort of say, I think it's this. Mm -hmm. But it's, these days it's significant. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, um, the con in theory, and before I, before you have a go at me, let me finish, all right? Um, it, the, the money is paid to the local planning authority. Yeah, so I saw your face, Nick. Yeah. Um, yes. um, 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 we will hold it, to be, uh, but we must spend it on the provision of affordable housing somewhere in the administration area of Sedgemore. That's why I'm saying don't shut, don't, don't, wait. Um, so... We hold money from other development sites, principally from Bridgewater sites, I used to have, where we could spend it anywhere in the district, and we have on occasion, because it's felt to be making better use of that money. Um, we generally get 10 years to spend the money. If we don't, we have to hand it back. And that happened over in Mended not so long ago. Yeah. But Barrett's got half a million quid back from a scheme that Mendip failed to spend their money. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's unfortunate. We have no intention of having any money back, I can assure you. Um, so if we were to hold it, hold that money and it could be spent elsewhere or anywhere in Sedgemore, technically we couldn't give you a guarantee it could be spent in Wedmore, which you know, on face value you, you would probably say that doesn't sound very fair to me. Um, what, what you heard last night, I am quite prepared, and, and we, are, we as a council would be quite prepared to ring, ring fence that money, that if it was to come off Holdenhurst, to be spent in Wedmore for a number of years. I can't, we need to agree what that is, but it could be five or seven or something like that. The intention is that it could be spent on another site to provide affordable housing as and when it's required. Sorry, bear in mind other sites that have got coming forward through an Able Plan Act here, yeah. Mrs. Duncan. Do you think there's going to be a need or even availability of land for more? Well, your neighbourhood plan has, mm -hmm. has tried to address what Sedgewell's suggesting your predicted growth is going to be over a period of time, hasn't it? Right, yeah. Because you've, you've done an awful lot of good work on that. Because right. I had a little look read of it this morning. Yeah. And you've identified four or five sites, yeah. which kind of just about brings you in line with where, the, se where Sedgemore the field is. Correct. Yeah. Now, this is the bit I think. So, the, one, the principle is if we get an offside contribution, Sedgemore will and would be happy to commit to ring fencing it, not to spend it anywhere else other than Wedmore for a period of time. But we cannot risk losing that money. So if nothing came forward, Likely. say in seven years, we couldn't find a site to put the money into, at some point we're going to have to spend that money somewhere else. Can I, yeah. can I, can I understand, when you say it has to be spent on affordable housing, yes. the true affordable housing would be passive housing, wouldn't it? It would be housing built, affordable housing built, where the people who occupy it don't have energy bills of any thing. Yeah, yeah. I did. That, that's I the ideal. 
Yeah, well, you do something over your nose like that. Well, I, I just wonder if we are going to have a, um, quite a few, we've got 40% affordables, if the neighbourhood plan carries on, we will have 30% on the other sides. Yes. Can that money be used to increase the... Or enhance um, the properties you're talking about. Yeah, the um, properties themselves, to make them... Passive. More, make them passive. If, what, what you mean is up spec it, basically, yeah. is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. I mean, in theory, yes, you could do that. Mm. So the developer... Because then they really are affordable. I mean, so you could say, we're going to spend, rather than provide more homes, is what you're supposed yeah. to do, yeah. you could use the money to say, well, well, okay, that's what we can secure from the planning home. game. Yeah. If we want passive homes, yeah. we'll use our money to provide that. Yeah. Well, in theory, you could do that. Well, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> well, we just opened up six passive va passive value houses in Overy, mm. and the difference is already making to those people's lives. Yeah. Is yeah. Well, you think you know, the average affordable it's home, especially rental economy, tends to be to a minimum spec. Yeah. That you then get away so, there. Um, in theory, we would, we could certainly consider it mm. because the developer would give us the minimum they'd have to give us in terms of spec. Mm. If you wanted a higher spec, and that was going to cost more money. Yeah. Then in theory we could put that well, money. That's, that's interesting because I can't see us needing money for more affordable homes in the next seven years, as it were. Uh, well, well, you don't know, but you. you well, but, we, we you, have you, the lights go ahead. Don't yeah, you know. don't know. My point was going to. I think you, the other point that you, you make a valid point is, if we were going to provide you the money to build more homes, it would have to be over and above. What you were getting through planning gate, right. yeah. it would have to exactly. be more than thirty yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. None of our developers would want to. Now, it's been put to me by Holden, the Holdenhurst people. Would members want to stick more money into Cross Farm to deliver more affordable housing there? I don't know. The problem is, Cross Farm's fairly full. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we've got forty-two percent affordable already. Yeah. yeah. Um, densities we've got. Densities. Yeah. I don't mean put more houses no, no, in. Mean I mean more. Put more, yeah. Yeah. more affordable. In the, in the five. 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 Cut down the market. Cut down the market and, uh, and put more affordable. Well, passive. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Or make affordable passive. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's an, yeah. there's an option there. I mean, Acorn have said to us they want to get the reserve masters application out of the way first, but they, they would be open to a discussion afterwards. Yeah. So, the, so, they're not, so they're quite possible. Um, I know the guy who's in, you know, planning, the chair of planning is, is deeply concerned about what's going to happen is there'll be a payoff and we'll end up with, the, we'll end up with, if you like, the, the cross-farm affordable houses and we won't end up with the houses that we should have earned from Holdenhurst. Now, you know, from what is being said, you know, we end up with a net loss of affordable homes. But if you've got enough land available now, if you could put more houses, more affordable houses on, that's a good thing. But if we haven't got more land, what you're saying is that we're just going to improve the quality of the affordable houses that we have, which I know the Green Group is very keen to do. Yeah, yeah if that's I what just, I'm saying. If I could just say that, um, that you know, whenever I speak to developers about how ecologically friendly your house is going to be, you know, are they going to have solar panels on the roof? Mm -hmm. What's their spec going to be? They resolutely stick their hands in their pockets and go, well, they're up to red, they're up to red. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. that's good enough, well, that yeah. way. Yeah. I think we can do better than that. So, yeah. so just, can I, just can I say sorry, Jess. My daughter lives in one of these, not as you uh, uh, absolute up to date, but she bought a new house seven years ago. And the cost of her heating, she can live in a four bedroom house, and it's not a small house, and it. The cost of heating that for the year with hot water and all isn't so much as my old house in a quarter. I sure, quite believe it. Yeah. And I think that is where we've got to aim for. It's got to be... Yeah, I yes, yeah. So, I do. So, the options... Uh, we hadn't thought of the idea of up specking, but that's perfectly <coughs> legitimate. Yeah. Um, you could hold the money, and we can hold the money, and have a dialogue with you, um, to say, do you want to up spec something? Or if the opportunity, if if your housing needs to have a horrible figure, I don't think it will, but it might do. Yeah, um, you might want to take a decision to say, well, what, what do we want to do? Do you want to build some more? Yeah. No, but like, all I'm saying is, that at the moment, we're prepared to ring fence that money. Um, 
for a period of time. So, so there's a good chance it could get spent in wedges. It's all subject to home yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It might yeah. be academic. Right? It so might be academic. But my, but my point is, <laughs> at some point, we're going to be saying, if you haven't spent it, yeah, you're going to, have you're going to lose it. Yeah. But five yeah. to seven years. That's a long time. It's not when you're trying to build 200 off the houses. Well, and the other point I've got to is committing the money is the key. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But the other point is you can't make a house passive after you've built it. You've got to be done as part of the build process. Absolutely. Yeah. So, in which case, you do need land that you can build passive houses on. <coughs> no, I thought the idea was that we would upgrade, make the Houses that we have got already planned. Yeah, more passive. That's the idea. You have to remember, where we're dealing with a third party developer, we can ask the question, they haven't got to give it to us. Who says, which third party developer? Well, any developer. We could say, we're prepared to chuck some money at this for you to upspare it. But they, I'm not, I'm, we haven't had this discussion with anybody, okay. but they could say thanks, but no thanks, we're not interested. Because mm -hmm. it might actually be more of a hassle to them, yeah. Yeah. because they would have a build contract to build yes. out other properties. But if we've got applications yeah. going in on other sites, it could be yeah. a complete yeah. plan certainly, application. It's certainly worth, worth, um, but I guess what I wanted to say tonight is, at the moment, there's a possibility if Holderness does get a permission, that the local plan authority will, could take an offsite contribution. We want to make sure that where we can spend it in Wedmore, but, the, but it pushes the ball back a little bit back to the local community to say, well, where you want to spend it, how do you want to spend it? All I'm saying is we can re it for a period, but if we feel you're not making, well, not you, we are making the progress that everybody would hope, at some point we're going to have to make a decision to take it and spend it somewhere else. Because we're not giving it back. Make no both about it. Well, I mean, if, if someone else develops and you know, Wedmore is then in the position to have his passive houses or whatever, can we have their money? No. If they turn out? I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we, we're getting community sums from other sites, and it wouldn't be on a bit of that to say, well, we'll transfer it to another village. Because we've done that in other places. As long as it comes back. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all I'm saying is, we're not in a rush to spend it somewhere else. Mm. That's my point. But we could spend it very easily, I would have thought. Well, all the houses that we're putting up, 115 houses or whatever it is. Very easy to spend that in that pot. Can I ask, the Housing Association that's going to rent the land, could they not ask the builders to improve uh, well, it, 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 well, it would probably be a two-prong attack. It would probably be us and, and the Housing Association. That's what I mean, because they've um, got to look after the needs of the tenants. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean it, it depends. I mean, we don't know who the Housing Association is yet. No. Um, I suspect it comes down to money for the developer. Um, crudely, mm. we'd like to think it'd be a bit more scientific than that, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously, all our main partners who ACON will be talking to um, have a commitment to provide affordable housing, both in the terms of what you pay in terms of rent or, yeah. or mortgage or shared ownership, or, 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 or but also to make it as cheap for people to run as well. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because we, what we want is for people to, and that's what we mean by affordable housing, yeah. not just the rent. So, yeah. that, so over over is a good example, and the figures aren't exactly right. A typical three bedroom house over there would cost about 1,300 quid to run in terms of heating or hot water. Yeah. They, they've done an estimate, I think it's about 150 quid yeah. a year. That's a massive savings. Okay. So, Duncan, have we got any um, successful community land trust operating within Sedgemoor? Well, we had one. We had one going over at Mark, which you're probably aware of. Well, um, they they asked. I mean, it was one of the things I. I when Polly and I were, uh, Councillor Costello and I were, were talking about what, about land trust or, and what have you, it, it could well be that you could use the land, to sec the money to secure a parcel of land on which a, a community land trust could then look to develop out. Mm -hmm. That would be a legitimate use of the money. Mm -hmm. Now a community land trust puts the, the owners back to the community as it sounds. Yeah. Now, um, where it fell over in Mark was, was simply that the, the 
the land trust went off at a real good pace and they were making fantastic progress. They chose a site, that's where it started unraveling, mm -hmm. and then what happened is it got very personal, I think it was the polite way to put it, yeah. and several members of the CLT decided that's enough for that. I'm not, I can't, I've got to live in this village, I can't be putting over it. And it kind of unraveled. Now, you could, I mean, you know, you know landowners, you could say, we've got X amount of money, could we buy a bit of land, put it aside for a, for a future affordable housing project if you need it. Bear in mind, we'd be putting a speculate, we'd be putting a requirement on it saying, yeah. you're buying it for the sole purpose of yeah. releasing it for affordable housing at some point in the future. Yeah. So in theory, you could do that. I mean, the advantage is, I see with a community land trust, i.e. we as a community manager, assuming we've got the resources to do it, we, we manage it, we can we we, we, uh, we decide who live in the properties, so it's for local families first and foremost, and we take it off of the uh, right to buy register. Correct. So it's always available on the cheap. I mean if you if if, if, if if members wanted to know about community land trust, we could certainly run another session and talk you through it. Yeah. Because there are there are very <laughs> variations on a theme. I think how you challenge them is finding um, volunteers to actually run the trust. And I think that is the major challenge yeah. because it, it is hard work. Mm. Every CLT you ever go talk to, doesn't matter how successful it is, will tell you it's hard work. Because, you know, you... It's a big you, responsibility. It's massive, but it has so many benefits because, I mean, even the CLT over at Mark, what they were going to do is they were going to effectively lease the land to, the, to a housing association who were going to manage it under the CLT's rules and regs and they were going to charge them a ground line. So there was an income coming back Perfect. into the community and you spend it all you want. Shame. It is a shame, but we live to fight another day. So if that's something you want to look at, yeah. we can explore that. We did talk about it. We did talk about it and you were going to come back to it later on in the year. Yeah. And it's almost these, these you know, later on which is starting to worry me. We've got five <laughs> to seven years and we need to get land, we need to have passive houses built from the bottom up, not stitched in. Mm, yeah. Five to seven years feels like a pretty short period of time to me. Mm. Now, people assure me that you know, I can have Cheddar's money to... <laughs> now, what I'm saying is, what we, we, we will work with the Parish Council and the Labour Planning Group. To, you know, if a site is coming forward, um, then our opportunity arises, we have that opportunity. What I'm saying is, if for whatever reason, Cross Farm and, let's say, Holden Nurse gets planning permission, they're the only schemes that come forward in the next five, six, seven years, then you're not going to get our money. We're going to spend no. it somewhere else. So there is a bit of pressure on to identify where you're going to spend that money. Now, I don't. it's not for me to say where that goes. But what I'm saying to you is, is they're sat there for you to use. You've got to identify the opportunity to do that. We can work with you to do it, but we need to follow your lead. Mm -hmm. to be I think the neighbourhood one would give He's already looking in that direction. All right, we've got, we got to a resting point. Can we sort of move on again now? I think so. Has anybody got any other questions about the off site contribution and the possible use of it? I think we've, it's a good Very idea for that. Thank you. It'd be quite useful to take that, in my mind. Mm. Right, the only other thing I wanted to talk about is, and it's really more of a process. Whereas I think we do need, collectively, I'm looking at everybody now, we do need to make get the message out to local people that if they have an ambition or feel they wish to be considered for the affordables at Cross Farm, um, we need to get them in the system. Yeah. Don't leave it until they're built. Until they're built. Yeah. I thought we'd done this. We'd You'll be surprised, uh, Jen. Uh, Jen. No, 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 no. Um, 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 if people look, what we were going to what we were going to do is we were going to we were going to we were, we were probably we were going to send some stuff across to say could you put it on your website? Could you make sure it's promoted in some form or another, like your post or the poster board? If people are genuinely struggling to 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 go on the system, and it is a bit of an onerous thing, to be frank with you. Um, then the council do have officers who can help you do it. Right, okay, so I spoke to someone back and forth through email because I was yeah, struggling. Not great, yeah. And they said, oh, we'll get back to you. In the short it. term. I know. And, I, and I spoke to someone on the phone. They said, the easiest way to do is email. 
Speak to Esther, and, so, and Esther could sort out. They went on for weeks, and I just made up in the end. What we don't yeah. want, we don't want a situation where, because somebody struggles to engage with our, our officers, mm. because the emails are not the best way to do it. But well, I appreciate it's on the phone as well. Yeah, but, I, but it may be that all we're saying is, these are the websites you need to go and register. Yeah. People are saying, I cannot do it. In the short term, it might be easier to come back to Esther and I, say, I'm having problems, yeah. and we could try and facilitate a... a we can run a session, can't we? A yeah. consultation session. Because I thought when you did that um, meeting down at the Swan, I thought that's what it was about, about how we could, you yeah. know... Well, it was partly get, about that. that. And we just asked, we were asked, um, oh, did you want to rent or want to buy? And obviously my husband and I said we want to buy. Correct. Um, and they said, right, okay, so if you go on to the website, and, and you can do it that way. So we tried doing that, and it was... If, it was, if, if members it was, were, it was just met with if like, members want us to run another session, we're happy to come to the, to the hall and we're happy to sit in the hall for some hours. Just and and, and all we've got to do really is just to help people through the process. Yeah. Yeah. But this is something yeah. new. It's not just a wife. I didn't yeah. think so. Yeah. 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 We, we don't mind doing our laptops a lot, we don't think we can do it here and there. Just do it in there. Yeah. So if that's what you want to do, um, we can. We can liaise with Rod and, and agree a, a date and a time, um, and all we need to do is publicise it. So, look, if you've got any interest, come along to this event. It would be good because there's so many people I've spoken to and they've yeah. had the same yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 Disappointed in that, yeah. but I'm sorry. But we need to. Uh, what I don't want is a situation where somebody misses out because yeah. of yeah. because of That's somebody it. we could have avoided. Yeah. Because yeah. this is about housing people. It's, we need homes in this village. Yeah, can you just say, I thought the first thing you wanted to know was how much it's going to cost them. Yeah, we... Um, they will do that. I think we'll be able to bring along some values and things for the shared ownership so that you can have an idea of what sort of... They can't say they're is. interested if they can't afford it in the first place. Well, I, right. I, I think what I'm saying at this stage is well, get on the list. list. Get on the list. Get on the list. Get on the list. Can I just explain to you how things get allocated for the rented stuff? You need to be on the list to start with. Um, and I've written it on the on, just yeah. on the bottom of this thing here. You have to be on the list, and when they're advertised, you have to physically bid for for, for a property. Now, if, if at the end of the day you're not on the list, you can't bid. Now, the shorter the period of time you're on the list, the less likely it is you're going to get a property. Because, like with our bank, we're doing like a. Help to buy, so we're putting right. an X amount. Yeah. <coughs> Can we put that? Yeah. Right, okay. Just wondering, the shed, quite an awful lot the home ownership product is slightly different because it's more geared around your ability to buy as opposed to. Because it's, it's, it's a deal, obviously, getting the more, Correct. More but, what, but what we need to know is what people can afford. Now, yeah. some people might be able to afford, I don't know, usually it's doing something 100 grand. Mm. Somebody might, somebody else might be able to afford 80 grand, 60 grand, or whatever. So when we're discussing that with the housing association, they will have a figure in their mind where they'd like to sell the price of sell on that. But what we might say is, well, could you have some below that price so you could buy a lesser percentage of the property and other people buy a slightly higher percentage, but across the, the lot, it averages itself out. Mm -hmm. So what we're able to do is tailor it to individuals financial circumstances because mm -hmm. not everybody will be able to afford the same amount mm -hmm. so so I mean, you're right they need to know what can we afford but equally we need to know what local people can afford because if we don't know the housing association might just set the bar too high mm -hmm. and the local people are going to miss out and that's not going to happen when, when you say bid you mean literally basically you have to yeah, basically basically it, it goes on the website yeah. and you physically have to go onto the website and say, I am interested in that property. That I can understand, but when you say bid, it sounds like there's... No, no, sorry. Commitment to... It's the terminology that we use. It's interest. It's special interest. It's terminology that the system uses. Sorry. That's right. Too many hands down here. Do you think you still have to look every week? Yes. Well, what you still have to look for somebody who didn't have an internet. And I looked every week for this person. What we will do, and what we do in other villages, is we make sure the parish council is aware. You know, as soon as we're aware, they're going. It's going to go on the system. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure the parish council are aware and, and try and get the message out. You must look at it. But, um, 
it's, it's just the system that the council have chosen yeah. to implement. In the good old days, when I was a housing manager, we used to actually select tenants, mm -hmm. ring them up to say, you, you're being considered, would you like to be considered for this property? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're right, people are having to monitor the system. Every week. Yeah. If, if you don't have access to the internet, it's difficult. Yes. But all we will do is we'll make it as clear as we can that there are properties being advertised in two, three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we, could, we could take a horse to water. Mm -hmm. So can, can, when you send out the housing needs survey, can you send that out information that, is on that information, that information is there? Is on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to speak to you about this paragraph here. Yeah. All things being equal, priority for any housing vacancy will be given to the applicant considered to be in the greatest housing need. So, mm -hmm. therefore, a gold band applicant would be more likely to be housed than a silver band applicant irrespective of what connection an applicant had with the business. Now that's, that is the standard Spawn. allocation policy, <coughs> but on an exception site like Cross Farm, oh, the local connection yes, is a factor with it. But, well, well, that doesn't mm. make sense then. I, I appreciate that, but I've explained it now, hopefully it does. Yes, um, so, the, so the way it will work... It is, doesn't want to say, yeah. What it says underneath, it says the advert will make it clear prior to be given will be given to applicants with a connection with the parish. So it does say that underneath. So what will happen is, and I use the terminology bid, but you know what it means now. So the app, the app will go out, people, people will bid, and you will get people bidding from all over the place. And what, what will happen is the housing association then will put them into the relative categories, local connection categories. So I, 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 would imagine, I forget what the exact word is, but I think the number one category is people currently anyway. living in your parish. Yeah. So the Housing Association will only look at that category one for those vacancies. And they will try to match up the properties with the people from category one only. If there are any properties left over, it will then look at category two, which is a still a connection, but a lesser connection. So all the people from Yeovil or Bridgewater or anywhere else, there, no connection with this village whatsoever, they're going to be down in category five or whatever it is. The light, they're never going to see the light of day on this one. So where the banding is relevant is if you have two people and there's only one property. From Wedmore. From Wedmore, so they've yeah. so so both this, got this set, this gold banding thing is to do yeah, with people yeah. in Wedmore. Correct. So <laughs> if you've got two people from the same local connection band, mm -hmm. so they're from Wedmore, and you've only got one property, mm -hmm. it'll be the individual that's got the higher banding. Okay. Um, and the reason why I'm saying people need to get on the list mm -hmm. as soon as possible is if you've got one property, same local connection, same banding, it's the person that's been on the list the longest. <coughs> now, I'm not saying that's fair, but that's how the system does it. So, which is why I'm saying, we'll worry about the devil and the detail stuff. If people want to be considered, the sooner you get yourself on the list, the sooner you start that clock ticking through your application. Um, so that's where the local connection, so that's where the, so the connection's the priority, and then we, then we so they're not going to offer someone in a category two, if, there, if there's people in cash one, the old band. If, and that's mm. the dilemma parish councils have. Because mm -hmm. what we did over at Owensbury and other villages, we run a little game where we say, we deliberately load it, so we've got lots of gold bands in the th categories two, three, four, and they're, and they're saying, well, that person's in greater need than that person, but you know, you've chosen to prioritise this local yeah. connection. So it, there'll be winners and there'll be losers. Mm. Um, so the way the, the section 106 <coughs> is written at the moment, it will go into categorising the groups and then they'll ban them and they'll, they'll match the properties from there. Okay. So there, there will be winners and losers, how are you doing? Because yeah, yeah. the other way of doing it is people with a lesser connection or in housing need will go some people are responsible exactly. for this. So you're, gonna, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Yeah. But the whole idea of this is that it's for local people. Correct. Yeah, that's and that's the priority. And, it, and for transparency's sake, the bidding process is on the system. Well, they don't know who they are. The reference numbers are there, and it's absolutely transparent about what that person's local connection is. And just to reassure you, people, not everybody tells the truth all the time. Um, the Housing Association will check and verify their local connection. So that will be a proof that you've been living here for the time that you claim to be living here. 
and they do fairly rigorous checks on that. And quite often we'll get the feedback saying that individual's not entirely being upfront with you about it, and we will adjust their application accordingly. So there is a rigorous check of local connection. So we don't just take people's word for it. Can I assure people, I know one person that did this away from here, and the housing association went to their house where they were with a small tooth, <coughs> even looked at all the bank accounts, everything, to check everything. It, it was so thorough they couldn't believe it. Correct. So and it's done properly and fairly. So um, the survey's going out next week, it carries that information. Um, and obviously, we're, we're, we're the press, when we get the press release out about the survey, we will also be putting the bit on the bottom. So please put your name on the list. And if you are struggling, um, come and speak to us. But we'll run a session here if you want us to do it. Yeah. And we'll leave the ball in your court to tell us what you want to do. Yeah. 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 Right, have we got any questions for Open from around the table? How about our spectators? Right, um, I'm conscious that you know we're, we've had a meeting for 55 minutes. If we've got nothing else we're going to tax them with, I'd like to say thank you both very yes. much yeah. for all and out. Nice and clear. Lots of questions. Um, in terms of communication, obviously uh, we're in communication with Polly, and Polly is up to speed. Two reasons we're up to speed. One is she's your ward member, yes. clearly. But she's also comes to lots of our housing meetings now and she knows exactly what's going on. So I, I do communicate yes, well, I communicate on a regular basis and obviously we're keeping Rod in the loop as well. Yeah, so uh, as and when things have evolve, develop or whatever, rest assured we'll tell you what's going so, on. Well, just just for thinking about this, we're looking at waiting for the results of this housing need survey or do we ought to be moving along something else sooner? I mean, the, the survey is simply, wait for the survey, because right. the question we're being asked, and we're asking you, is do you want to change what you've already yes. agreed? Yeah. Now, I don't think you can do that until you've got the survey back. No, no, no. No. I don't think you can do that. But on this, on this business side yeah. I've mentioned about the clustering, and there being 14 of the 24 in one place, in a very small yeah. place, which is on this map. Which you can have a look at. You well, know, you you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when can you? Well, can I, you address? I mean, I can raise it through my formal comments. <coughs> would you? Would you? Um, ultimately, it's for the planning department to determine the application. I can raise concerns, um, so I can raise concerns about lack of pepper potting or or issues around that, and I often do. Uh, much of my planning colleagues. Um, frustration, but it's, we've got to get it right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got over over half of the of the affordables in one area. Correct. And, and until That's I've looked at it, I can't. Yeah. But yes, it, I will comment on the clustering as part of the as part of the planning response because you're. you're and well, we can, and I can do that. And anyway. you can do that, and everybody else. Can everybody do that. else. Can um, from my original outline comments, I made a point to say. The units must be indistinguishable in appearance to the market housing and they must be well integrated with the market housing. That's what I said when we did the outline application yeah. and I have no reason to go back on that. So but I don't think that's integrated. Okay, thank you very much. Thank everybody. Class, it's over.